Hello everybody, Sorry, Katsune here. Okay, so I've been requested to do a video regarding uh, animals, pets, dogs in Japan essentially and owning them and that kind of thing. So I have taken a few like requests, like questions, whatever you want to call them from people on Facebook and other media. And I'm going to go ahead and answer some of these questions and some other things. So, do you have a little background here? Um, I've been in Japan for almost two years. Uh, in March, I had recently got my first dog. So, now I actually own pets in Japan before it's mostly just doing research and everything. Uh, my dog, Kiba. Hey, Kiba. This is my dog, Kiba. He's a Shiba, as you can see. So Akiba is from the U.S. I actually had him sent over from the U.S. to come to Japan and live with me because he's one of my dogs. If you know me and my dogs, I have like seven of them and he's the first one to venture out here. So yay, Akiba, he's a treat. Okay, go lay down. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started answering these questions, okay? So first question comes from Jay. Where are the best places to find pets, exotic and otherwise? That's kind of tough because um, really the best places, in my opinion, would honestly be from a breeder or a rescue. Rescue or breeding, it all depends. But um, unfortunately, those options can be difficult, if, especially if you're foreign. Those options can be difficult to find. Now, in Japan, they market uh, pet shops like nobody's business, okay? So, for example, there's a pet shop down the street from my house. It's like PetSmart, except for they sell dogs and or puppies and kittens as well. Not how PetSmart in the U.S. will take rescue cats and will leave them all there for the week and you, you can adopt them out and then they'll have kittens and adults and babies and everything. And then on the weekends, they'll either get like a bigger cat rescue or usually dog rescue. So you can get, adopt a dog on the weekend. Well, these are just, uh, you know, broker puppies or whatever. So I'm not saying they're puppy mill puppies, but they're pet shop puppies and they're puppies. They get them from the from whoever breeds them there. They sell them to the the pet store, you know, that kind of business. Same with the U.S. Now, some of them is kind of interesting because sometimes when I go to the pet store to go buy things for the dog, um, they will have the little cards on on the uh, the puppies uh, the puppies uh, information tag or whatever and they'll say that they're oh look at this is from this nice show quality poodle or Pomeranian or something and I'm like well if it's you know you can get show quality stuff from in the US like that from the pet store because some people do that but that was like a selling point to work for in Japan, I thought that was interesting that, you know, instead of selling your puppies, puppies, you're taking them to the pet store, but it's probably not different from the U.S. But anywho, so that's where you can get dogs and cats, mostly from pet stores. And then you can get them from rescues, you can get them from breeders, breeders probably like down here. But um, rescues, they have like ARC, which is a nice place, it's really big, lots of space, it's just in like kind of like the country mountains and you have to like you can't take a train and then just walk there i mean if you walk it might take like an hour or something if you drive it might like a taxi might take like 30 minutes something like that i'm not sure i last time i looked at it on google search it was like a while so but it's it's kind of a trek to get up there and so it's not always easy to go adopt from shelters and everything or um japan cat network so if you are looking for a cat, it's a little bit easier because, you know, everybody has cats or just finds cats. And so it's easier to just get a cat rather than a dog in that uh, aspect or regard. So that's for that. Now for exotic animals, um, I'm still kind of looking up the, the ownership on that per se. But when I was looking into Finnick Foxes, I wanted to look and... I heard that they were at a pet store and I was just really curious like how do you have that at a pet store well you do and I found them they were cute adorable it was great 
and uh, if you need a permit per se, possibly, possibly, but you have to obviously have your permit before you purchase the animals and everything. I went to a pet store in uh, Namba City and it was, the pet store was on the second floor of this department store and you had hardware, you had clothes, you had crafting stuff, then you had a pet store which had puppies and kittens and uh, vets and grooming and all of that kind of stuff and then in the back corner you had the exotic animals where they sold fennec foxes and um you know your regular squirrels like little tiny squirrels and sugar gliders and hedgehogs and uh, some of the interesting animals that I took note of that I've never seen was um, they had a pet meerkat so you could buy a meerkat um, they had owls like big like child-sized owls <laughs> or you can get a tiny little owl you can get like a little hawk or um, what else did they had um, what is it? The meerkat. They had the little monkeys. So you can buy a little pet monkey. Um, just like giant tor. They had a giant tortoise too. Like giant tortoise. One of those big ones. So you can buy any one of those. And um, you probably would need a permit. You probably also need to prove that you can own one of those. That's probably an another question I will go over. But I would recommend. If you wanted those type of animals and you you wanted to live in Japan with those type of animals I would at least uh, you know if make sure you have to have a permit or not just double check that and then um, go to the pet store and find out where they get their animals from and then talk to that person and see if they know other people and then network that way so that you can find maybe better quality animals that are not in the pet store but maybe find somebody else that could you know that may be more selective who they sell or anything like that and just find out now again it was kind of hard getting this kind of information in general because uh, it does take a lot of a a lot of a Japanese skill a lot of a Japanese skill it does take a Japanese skill level that's a little bit higher than mine to um, explain kind of what you need and then kind of network with these people because a lot of them do not speak much English especially in their field of animals and everything and so they might not understand or they might not know because again if a lot of in the US a lot of pet store people like breeders that just sell straight to the pet store and don't do that they don't um, what's it called they don't communicate they don't know other breeders they don't talk to people in their circle. Usually dog show people and maybe uh, reputable breeders will know other people in their circle. And they say, well, if I don't have, this person might. If you're looking for this, this person might know. Like they have a network. Same with it, with rescues, they have a network. Pet store people do not have a network. And in Japan, in general, a lot of people, if they don't understand, they don't network very well like that. So again, it can be a little bit challenging, but depending if you want like, um, I know with like a you know, Japanese breed, like um, uh, Kishu, Kaiken, Shikoku, well, maybe not Shiba so much, or Akita or something. Um, they have a little bit of a bigger network because of how small the breed is and how close they're trying to preserve it. So you have a better chance of finding people that you can buy from. Again, be careful with um, that foreigner bias kind of thing because some people they get worried because foreigners do put on a bad, um, kind of a bad rep of pet ownership. They go, we buy a dog, we got a puppy, it's great, and then, oh, we gotta leave the country, goodbye, leave the dog sometimes. And not saying people that live here don't do that, but, you know, it's like you have a higher chance of that because what are the chances of somebody in Japan, like a Japanese person, is just gonna leave Japan to go move somewhere else? It's not a thing. But you as a foreigner from whatever country, as a foreigner, non-Japanese person, you are going to leave. There is a higher chance of you leaving Japan. So there you go. There's that. But yes, again, that's are the places you can find them. The best places would be trying to find a breeder, Google searching it. You do have to search what you're looking for in Japanese. Find 
you know, go on Google Translate, get the kanji, if there's kanji for it, or the, you know, katakana, hiragana characters, and just search it that way, and then your city, search it that way, and you'll find a lot more hits than just typing it in English and hoping it will pull up, because I've tried that, and doing it in Japanese is better, and obviously if you don't speak Japanese, or very little Japanese, use Google Chrome, and it will just automatically translate the page for you. Bam. Done. I mean, you can be able to figure it out a lot easier than staring at uh, characters all day. Okay. Hopefully that answered that one. Next one. Are there any pets that are legal to own here in the U.S. that you could own in Japan? Mmm. Illegal pets. So far, not that I know of. I mean, they're pretty similar. Like, because, again, the U.S., you can own a lot of different things as long as you have a permit. As long as you have a permit, you can own them in Japan, but it's the difference is space. Like, in your apartment, there's a lot of things you can't own. So, if you had a house in the country that nobody was going to bug you, you might be able to own a little bit more things. But, again, it's the uh, finding these animals in Japan to own them. That would be a thing. Um, so I feel like at least in the US, you would have more of a variety of animals you can own. Now, um, the meerkat thing, I've, I've never seen anybody own a meerkat. That was kind of weird. <laughs> that was kind of weird. I was like, there is a meerkat here. And you could probably own them in the US. I've just never heard of anyone doing that. And in Japan, you can. So maybe that's one. I don't know if it's illegal, maybe, but yeah. All right, next one. Do you do people assume you're rich? I hear owning it, owning pets in Japan is very expensive. I don't care if that's anime or actually true. People do, people do, because it's just like, oh, do you have a dog? Like, huh? You have a dog. Hello, dog. It's shocking. It's shocking. And then, um, it's not just it's the fact that you're rich because uh, pet store puppies. Everybody buys from the pet store. Pet store dogs are like, um, you. the variety of dogs I've seen is mostly poodles, chihuahuas, pomeranians, uh, the occasional Shiba, uh, the occasional Schnauzer, but mostly small dogs. Kiba here, this guy, this guy is considered a medium sized dog. Medium sized. In the US, this is a small dog. I mean, it's not a teeny teacup dog. You're not a teacup. Nope. But, he is considered a medium-sized dog here in Japan. So there's a lot of smaller breeds like Yorkies and Chihuahuas that are like more popular and poodle, apricot toy poodles, that specifically. And um, Dachshunds. Dachshunds are also, you know, very popular. So you'll have those types of dogs and those dogs will run from mm, about 18 to $2,500, give or take. The 18 range is mainly for if they're older, so if they were born, maybe they're three or four months old, five months old, and they've been sitting in the pet store for the couple past couple of months and they haven't sold yet, that might be why they're cheaper. But mostly it's roughly about $2,000 a dog. And so in the U.S., and this isn't like getting a pedigree puppy where you're going to get papers and you're going to be able to show and it's good quality and you know all the lines and everything. No, this is just going to the pet store. And even for Shiba, I went to a pet store in, in, uh, what was it? It was in Vegas or Minnesota, one or the other, probably both. A Shiba puppy I saw was at least like twelve, maybe $1,500. And I mean, that was expensive for me. I used to sell Shibas. And I mean, for a pet store puppy that's not getting the same kind of like health check on the parents and everything like that and the support that a breeder should give, um, that was an expensive puppy and here they were more expensive than the same pet store puppy. Yeah, they're cute. Yeah, they're slightly small and deformed. <laughs> they're like slightly small and deformed because they're like oddly, like some dogs can be oddly smaller than standard, U.S. standard. And the Japanese dogs are built off like the standard, the Japanese dogs in the U.S., their standard is based off of the Japanese standard. But even that's still kind of weird. But yeah, their dogs are a little bit smaller. It's funny. Sad, but funny. 
But, um, so yeah, people do assume that you're rich because you have a dog and it's like, oh gosh, but a dog is expensive. Then you have to get, you know, insurance for it. You, you do have to register it with your, um, your ward and get shots for it once a year. They'll send you a card, cute little card, she said, and you will get your shots done every year. There's no three year rabies shot and everything. It's still a rabies shot, even though we don't have rabies here, but that kind of thing. So, um, dog food bags are like, mm, let's say that you have the generic dog food bags are like this big, maybe a little bit bigger. Uh, kilograms are about three kilograms, maybe a couple pounds. And that'd be like a $10 bag of dog food. And personally, I'm like, my dog can eat that in a couple days. And you're spending $10 for a couple of days worth of food. And it's crappy food. And then obviously if you want more, um, you know, premium dog food is almost like a hundred dollars for like s still a small bag so it's crazy so yes people do assume that you do have some money you do work or you you know you you got some money because you have to afford a dog and I mean it's a little bit more expensive having the apartment they're like wow you must live in a rich apartment I think that's like the next one is the next one about the apartment thing and so you must live in the big old place or have a house or anything uh, no. Personally, I have a two-bedroom apartment, so it's a 2DK. Um, I live probably 30 minutes from the station walking, so it is kind of a little out of the way. That is a thing that happens, but oh well. Um, if I want to travel with a dog, the other thing is you must... It's the, it's the idea that if you want to have a dog and take it places, a big dog or Kiba-sized dog or more than one dog, you need to have a car to travel because generally public transportation doesn't do pets. Now, Kiba, where's Kiba? Oh, he's over there. I take Kiba with me everywhere. You might've seen pictures if you follow my pages or anything, or Kiba has his own Instagram. I think it's like Kiba Osaka Adventure. I could put a link in that, in the comments or whatever there. Um, we go places. I, I don't leave my dog. Like, when I go to work, I leave my dog at home. When I'm not at work and we're going to go places, we're going to go to shrines. We're going to go to the city. We're going to go to the stupid pet store or the park or whatever. There is a dog park by my house. But um, we're going to go places. And how do we go places? We go together. And how do we do that? We take a dog stroller. Um, for all the people that were like, when they hear dog stroller or pet stroller, they're like, oh my god. How do you just like put your dog in a stroller and then just push it places? Like that's so crazy. Let the dog walk. And I'm like, that's understandable. Now I do not push my dog in a stroller for fun. Okay, maybe it's a little fun. But, and maybe I do have fun doing it cause it's cute and I can like get places with him and he doesn't have to walk. It's hot outside. So if we're out in the heat and the ground is hot and his paws are getting a little sensitive and everything, he is uh, eight and a half years old. I mean, it's not too old, but you know, do want to protect his feet and everything. I don't have booties for him. <laughs> Foot booties. <laughs> feet booties, whatever. Um, putting him in the stroller, it's kind of good. Maybe he gets tired and if we're on a long walk or something and he gets exhausted, you know, I don't mind pushing him. I don't want to carry him. Carrying him makes us both hot, especially in the summer, it makes us both hot. So being able to put him in a stroller and push with wheels so I'm not carrying him in a big dog crate, this is easier for both me and him in that aspect. Also, the main reason why I bought the stroller is because of having to go on tran public transportation. In the US, I had a car. I drive places. I load up my dogs. I had I have seven dogs. We get in a car all together um, and we go places and then we get on a leash, walk, and when we're done, we load back in the car and go back home. I don't have that option here. Right now, I do not have a car. I do not have a Japanese uh, driving license. I'm working on that. Uh, probably will work with the international license and then whatever after that. But I don't have a car. So the only the only transportation I have is public transportation and the only way to use that with my dog because they have to be in a crate 
they're not really supposed to be in a purse per se like you know just like a little sling purse or whatever they need to be in a carrier crate and um you know if you had a cat and it was in a carrier you can like carry a cat carrier and put it down it's not that bad but with this guy that's um about what 23 pounds people or about 23 pounds 23 pounds of dog and then plus crate that's and then having to lift into a um train find a place to sit down put him there and then lift out and then carry it in between the train station and if you guys don't know which a lot of you may may or not know train stations in japan are pretty freaking big like popular big city ones they're pretty freaking big and even the small one like the train station by my house one of them is really small it's just two tracks that's it that's not so bad but walking 30 minutes and then having to carry a crate that like that's a lot of freaking work for me that's a lot of work walking there carrying the dog everything leave the dog at home if you guys know dogs and I bet you guys do and if you have dogs you already know you don't always leave your dog at home that's crazy so the stroller is a good thing to have you take it you go you um, it's great public transportation but anywho besides the point so I don't have a car now when I get my next dog um, we'll get a bigger stroller and then when I, if I get a bigger dog or you know whatever then we'll work on getting the car like you don't have to have a car if you have a bigger dog then maybe so so but if you have a small dog like this use a stroller yeah men women I don't care use it people will be like oh look it's a baby it's a baby oh it's a dog all that kind of stuff yeah it's whatever let it be so what you don't have to carry that that's fine your dog and your dog is fine and safe and if you go somewhere and you know when I'm going down busy streets I might still have them in the stroller because it is kind of busy and I'm trying to get by people because Japan is very packed so it's easier so nobody trips over the dog and we have our space Japan is all about not giving space to people <laughs> so funny they like to sardine each other so I don't have space but if I have a stroller and if I have a dog and I'm trying to walk people will not see the dog like is he small enough that you're not going to see him unless you were like on top maybe on top of him or if you're paying attention you might see him but if I'm pushing him in a stroller he stays safe as we navigate through things and once we get to our destination then I let him out and do what he needs to do we'll play take pictures do all that stuff and if we need to go places and maybe um, some like some places some shrines they might not always accept pets again I'll go over that but it you know you need to put your dog away you need to cover him over then just stick him in the stroller and have it move on if they say you need to hold him and it's again you don't want to hold him just stick him in the stroller zip up the bag and he's good he's safe he's fine happy happy okay um oh no my question thing died um uh, let's see <laughs> well from what I remember because I was using my iPad and my iPad just died so that's kind of crappy anywho the next question was finding an apartment in Japan so that was a lot of pets my experience when I first moved to Japan I was looking for apartments and I was pushed into getting my first apartment which was a 1R one room box I had an option between that or getting a pet friendly apartment that was a little bit nice it was kind of a nice little bigger room and I would have enjoyed that place and I do think about that place sometimes but um what's it called um it was a little bit more expensive and by the time you get set up fees which is you have your rent you have your key money your deposit your your guarantor fees, your um, realtor fees, you know, all the fees you have to pay, you're paying like like a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars just to move into an apartment to be paying like six or you know, four to six thousand or not four to six thousand, four to six hundred dollars for rent. So it's expensive to move into an apartment. It's expensive, especially if you live alone. And when I first came, I only had a little bit of money to work with so I just got the one apartment it was not pet friendly and I wouldn't want to have a pet in that one R apartment anyway so there you go 
but on when I started actually looking for an apartment to find a pet friendly apartment I was looking for a very specific apartment so this was you know after a year living in the one apartment I was ready you know working my, my current job now which makes a little bit more but I wanted to get out of that apartment and actually start a, fr a pet friendly apartment so I can save up and get my first dog this guy sleeping down here anywho so in that hunt it probably took me two weeks to find the apartment I actually was trying to contact multiple people and looking and see if we can go look at apartments they made it a tad bit difficult for me just in looking for an apartment because um, they're like well you need to be ready to move into your apartment within like one to two weeks and I'm like well I don't want to give my notice for like my my housing, my current apartment, if I'm not guaranteed this apartment now. You know what I mean? So, anywho, my requirements were I wanted a pet friendly apartment, but not just a pet friendly apartment. I wanted a pet friendly apartment. So, if I wanted to have three dogs, or not three dogs, I mean, I would like three dogs, but I wanted to have multiple dogs and one of them be a large dog and also be large dog friendly because you have to be really specific on that. Just because it says it's pet friendly, does it, there's a lot more to it, which I'm going to explain. So pet friendly, it's like pet negotiable and they have different types of those, different types of what they mean. You always have to check and double check again. So um, when they mean by pet friendly they or negotiable, they'll let you have of uh, maybe a cat or a small dog. Again, Kiba. 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 Come here, Kiba. Come here. Oh, that's a good boy. Okay. You see my Shiba? There's a light there. Here's my Shiba Kiba. He's not so big. He's like, like I said, 23 pounds. Um, you know, he's a standard little Shiba. He's kind of, like he's in standard for Shiba size and everything. He's not as like meaty bone fat and all that stuff. Okay. <laughs> You're not meaty bone fat Shiba. In my opinion, he's a small dog. In Japan, he's a, he's a medium sized dog. And so when they say small dog, this is not a small dog. This is a medium sized dog. So I can't have a Shiba Inu. It's weird because I had to uh, try to understand that I'm like, well, this is a small dog, and if you were, they're like, well, that's not a small dog. And I'm like, well, in Japan, this is your smallest breed of dog. You have Akita and Kishu in you, but this is your small dog, and you're saying that's not a small dog. So, I don't know what to say. But, okay. So, you can't, I can't, I could not have my Shiba. I needed a smaller dog that was maybe like 5 to 10 pounds as a small dog. Or a small cat. Now... When they say you can have one, you can all, some places will only let you have one pet, either a cat or a 10 or, you know, less pound dog. One, not two, not two. Now a cat and a dog, or two cats, or two little dogs, no, just one. That was a thing, I wanted to have multiple pets because if I, I can't have a dog by himself, I'm gonna get him a buddy. Now if I get another one, that's great, but places you have to be specific am I allowed to have more than one dog just because you're pet friendly and you let me have one dog am I allowed to have more than one now cats cats are different again people you can kind of get away with maybe having more than one cat I mean like with a dog people are going to know if you have a dog you have to take your dog out to the bathroom many a times many a times <laughs> You have to walk your dog. You leave, you take your dog out, and you bring him back, and people are going to see you when you come through your apartment. You're going to come in, you're going to come out, and people are going to watch and see you. Let me see if I can borrow this charger here and get this going. They're going to see you. Well, with a cat, you don't do that. Your cat just stays in the house. You should keep your cat as an indoor cat. Letting them go outside and everything, I mean, I'm... I'm not good at cat ownership. I don't have a cat. My cat used to, I used to have a cat for a short time and it was outside. 
but here in Japan, there's a lot of things that can happen to your cat. There's other dogs, there's other cats, there's ant there's weasels. <laughs> there's other things out here that can happen to your cat, and it's better just to keep your cat safe. Now your dog, I have a balcony I let him out sometimes on, and he'll go out outside, but um, yeah. So people know I have a dog, they won't know I have a cat. So you can probably get away with having more cats. You don't want to like lie to people or lie to your realtor or your landlord and say, you, you know, sneak cats or sneak pets because when they find out, that's a problem. And it might be two months before they find out. It might be a year before they find out. It might be like whenever. It might be the next day and somebody sees your animal and they report. I don't know. But, and you might have everybody in your, your whole housing and building hiding pets. I know people that have places like that, but it's better just to be upfront, at least with what you want so that in the future there are no problems. Again, if I wanted a, two small dogs or just having multiple pets but they had to stay like Kiba size or smaller, then you know, that's fine. But if I'm walking around with like um, my bigger dog Kuvira or a dog that size, like big dog. I can't hide that. <laughs> you can't hide a big dog. And they're like, where'd you get that from? Oh, I just found it. You know, you can't hide a bigger dog. It barks big. It makes big poop. It does all this stuff. You can't hide a bigger dog like that. Especially because everybody else walks their dogs up and down here. I've seen bigger dogs. I've seen smaller dogs. My apartment lets, my current apartment now lets all dogs, you can have multiple dogs. You can have big dogs. You can have small dogs. You can have dogs. Probably cats too. I don't know anybody have cats because, you know, cats. But, yes, so, um, you need to be up front. And it's a lot easier because you can get a place that is maybe pet friendly. You have neighbors that also have pets. You might be friends. I actually know a couple neighbors now. We let our dogs meet and play, so it's great. They have their friends. It's wonderful. But, um, as for the cost, Mm, the cost of owning it does make it a little bit more expensive because while you can look for a 2DK apartment and probably find a nice cheaper one with the space and decent location, if it's not pet friendly, then you your large variety of um, options here gets you where if you want a pet. If you want multiple pets, it's you. And if you want a big dog, it's you. You know, it's pretty here if you want a big dog in general. One big dog, psh, a little dog, eh, okay. Multiple dogs, eh. A cat, eh. From what I've, he what I've heard from other cat people, a lot of my friends in Japan that I know that have pets have cats. Barely any of them have dogs. It's sad. Kiba needs friends. But they've had a hard time actually finding places for cats because the people think cats will tear up and scratch at the wall. Now dogs can be destructive too, but you have to take your dog in and out. Well, a cat will just be home all the time and can destroy your house, so. Or not destroy your house, but it doesn't have an outlet to release itself. Now you can get a cat tree and whatever, but people just don't want the cat staying at home, scratching and scratching while you're walking your dog. That can go out, go to run and all that kind of stuff. Yet, you know, they also, it's, it's weird. So I've heard that getting a, ha, getting an apartment that's cat friendly, they say pets, they mean small dogs, not always cats. It's difficult, but, um, hmm. Um, again, I was looking for a place I wanted a big dog and places were more, obviously more welcoming to get a cat than a big dog or one pet versus a big dog. So that's where my whole thing was, but it's not impossible. Again, it took me about two weeks of kind of looking. I had two different people looking and I was also just kind of walking in my neighborhood and just looking like I see people walking their dogs and they go inside a building and I ask, can you check this building in this area and see if they have any openings? Talk to people, see if they have like places that they know are pet friendly or they know the realtor that lives there and they will accept a pet and then negotiate with them. You can always talk to them, like you can talk and ask. 
if you need somebody that speaks Japanese, you can get somebody to in between that. But yeah, look at places. The other thing I wanted was in the elevator because they had many places that were one, two, three stories, but they had no elevator. You had to climb up and down the stairs, and I'm not about that stair life like that. I should be. I probably can have good leg game, but um, you know, having to carry other things and people wanting to visit or just days I don't want to climb. Um, I do have, you know, Kiba is eight and a half. What if one day he just doesn't want to walk up the stairs anymore? Then what? It would be difficult. So, um, I wanted elevator. I wanted the dogs. It was a little bit of a challenge to find, but I found a place, this place, um, price wise, you know, to move in, it cost me about $2,500 to move in and that only paid for the first month's rent. And then um, essentially you pay an extra $300 to um, have a pet, which is a pet. De it's not really the pet deposit, it's more of the sterilization fee. So you pay it one time for as many animals as you want and then it's like $300. No, you know, you do that. So, and I guess that's for when you move out and they just clean it because you have pets. Now. After, if you are wanting to move in and you don't have a pet already, be sure that it's okay. Excuse me. Make sure that it's okay that you can have a pet and then let them, like, and they say let you let them know later. You don't have to let them know later, but unless they ask and you say, yeah, I just got a pet. Here you go. And then you can pay your fee then. But um, don't pay your fee before you get a pet because you might change your mind. And then you're out that money, you're not going to get it back. So it's better just to wait, you know, not pay the fee, wait till you get a pet. It makes sense, but sometimes they'll try to push that and say, no, you need to pay it before for cleaning. And it's just like, well, I don't have a pet yet. What if I don't get one? Then what? So, and then afterwards you would pay it. So, okay, got my iPad working here. Now I'm already at 37 minutes. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. Uh, we were talking about kind of with the animals. Uh, is it hard to find places to take your pet to play or just go to the bathroom? Um, yes and no. Mostly for dogs. I take my dog outside. He pees outside. Um, a lot of people will get water bottles. You're kind of supposed to get water bottles and pour it on the pee and help clean it or whatever. There's a little bushes and it's in the street. I don't care. <laughs> I'm really bad about that. I pick up poop. I got my doggy bag to pick up poop. To pick up poop. But pee, I'm just kind of like, eh. And it rain. it's in the rainy season right now. So it rains every other day. So I'm just like, oh, the rain will catch it. It's no big deal. But um, you just don't want them to pee, obviously, on people's houses. They have signs where they're like, don't let your dog pee on things. I'll have like a little don't let your dog pee in Japanese. You can see what that means because it's at dog level. So it's like the dog's supposed to read it in Japanese. It's funny. But um, mostly um, about the bathroom thing, I was told that when I went to go register my dog and I wanted to get more information about how to be a better, um, a better responsible pet owner in Japan, if they had any things about that, maybe um, for new owners or whatever. I was considered a new owner, so I would like to know the do's and don'ts. Well, um, one of the ladies, they wasn't that sure and they didn't have any information. I don't know. I guess if, when you buy from a pet store, they give you more information. But again, I got my dog from, you know, from America, so I, there's no information there. But um, what's it called? They told me to buy a pet pan, like a pan litter box kind of thing for my dog so he can potty inside because you're not supposed to take your dog outside to potty. You take your dog outside to exercise and to play and to get, you know, fresh air, but they're supposed to potty inside and for them to potty outside is like you get the water bottle and clean the pee and all that kind of stuff. You erase their evidence that they were there. and. You know, me personally, I'm like, you take your dog out to use the bathroom. I don't want my dog crapping in the house. I don't want my house to smell like pee. I don't want to buy a pet pen for that. We're going to go poop outside. This is a sheep sized dog. If I have a bigger dog, I really don't want that. So, we're not doing that. I'm sorry, Japan, we're not doing that. 
And um, I've seen a couple people get puppy pads, you know, or whatever for accidents is fine, but in diapers, sometimes keep wear the diaper because he doesn't keep himself clean sometimes. So, you know, but as for just like they're supposed to poop and pee in the house, no. Potty training, maybe. Uh, well, if you have it for training, but again, no, no, we're not doing that. Okay, let's see. Do they have weight restrictions like they have in Oklahoma? Are the more are cats more accepting than they are owning dogs? I kind of mentioned that, but again, the weight restrictions is a small dog, it's not a sheep sized dog. If they're about 20 pounds or the size of a schnauzer, a French bulldog, it's a Sheba, that's too big. Okay, I'm gonna turn on my fan. Okay, had to get on my fan. It's, it's a little humid in here. Uh, maybe if I can turn it on. This one? This one? This one? This one. Okay. So, next. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Everything is kind of like hot and crazy. Sorry, all this unprofessional video making. Anyhow. And see, it's illegal to own this type of dog in Japan. Cerberus, silly. You don't own Cerberus. Cerberus owns you. And if anybody wants to argue with that, there's only a few people that physically can. So, yeah. But again, you also have to consider where do you put Cerberus? Where would he go? And you want to make sure that Cerberus is still happy. So, yes, keep that in mind. How much does it cost to bring an animal over from the U.S. to Japan and vice versa? Okay. <laughs> We're almost done. We have a few more questions here. Okay, so keep a side dog. It's roughly about, um, I'd say about, you want to budget between 12, I'd say about $1,200, so $1,200. I would say is a good price for that. Only considering the fact of to come from the US to Japan, and it'd probably be actually cheaper the other way around because how you get, well, I'll again go over that. Yes, <laughs> because it's expensive. Now that's for Kiba who is under, if you fly through United, I know United is, oh, United Airlines, but they have the more flexible uh, flying with your pet options that they option in general. So United for a dog under 50 pounds, it's the flight itself, depending on where you're coming from, from Oklahoma to Osaka, it is, um, just for the flight alone, it is $824, about that. The, the flight itself is actually $600, like $624, and then maybe it's like $34, like eight, less than $850. The actual flight itself is 624 to fly from, you know, from location from, he has to fly from Dallas to uh, Osaka because Oklahoma City does not have an international airport that flies animals, so he'd have to fly from Dallas to San Francisco, San Francisco to Osaka. Now, because he has to fly to San Francisco, every dog has to fly through San Francisco or whatever, he has to take an overnight flight and or has to stay overnight and that's where the extra $200 comes from and you have to pay that. Like I've tried many ways to avoid that. It's just a thing. You have to essentially pay an overnight fee and then they fly the next day to fly, you know, straight through to Japan. Now maybe if they were going to Tokyo it might be different, but to Osaka where I need to fly my dog, that's how much it's just the flight. Now, um, of course you have to um, pay for getting the dog ready to fly and then when you pick them up from customs, you have to pay um, a fee to get them out of customs. I think it was like about $45, $40 to $50 to get them out of customs, so that's not bad. So about an average for Kiba, it was about $12, maybe $1,300, about that. That's not so bad considering buying a puppy is like over $2,000, maybe $250 or $2,500 or whatever. So it's cheaper to, for me to bring my dog from the U.S. to Japan than to buy a dog in Japan or a puppy in Japan. 
Okay. Now, mm, let's see. Are there any pet friendly restaurants like in the U.S.? There are a lot of places have patios, a lot of uh, a lot of bars, a lot of um, little cafes. Um, we obviously have pet cafes, but they're more um, like cat cafes. You don't bring your cat to the cat cafe. You just enjoy the cats there. Um, same problem with dog cafes. You don't bring your dog. You just enjoy the dogs there. Now they do have little shops that you can go that are pet friendly. You can sit outside and order those. Um, I know there's a Mexican restaurant that was by my old house that had a little patio where you can order and I need to go back there and that was actually, I almost moved to that place if it wasn't like a thousand dollars a month. <laughs> But Mexican restaurant and then apartment and it was pet friendly, but also it would not allow a bigger dog like Kiva, so that was the other reason. Sad, but true. But yes, they do have them. Um, they're not as, depending on where you're at in Japan, they can be many, like Tokyo, Osaka, like city-wise, you can find many of them. And then if you're like where I'm at, which is little nothing, eh, not so much. But they do have pet friendly restaurants and stuff like that. Um, do you know anything about guide and therapy dogs in Japan? I'm thinking of getting one before I get a job there, but I don't know if they have guide dog walls like we do here. Okay. Alrighty, so. Yes, they do, but it's not as popular and common. Um, pretty much, um, there we go. I was wondering why it was kind of way down there. Pretty much, um, I haven't seen many guide dogs in Japan, and Japan has a lot of people that need a lot of help. A lot of blind people, but none of them have guide dogs. It's weird. I don't know. But um, to get and bring a guide dog or service dog, therapy dogs, you know, therapy dogs, I'm still kind of learning about that because Kiva is, is a certified therapy dog as well, but I haven't really done anything with him here in Japan not many you know still looking over that process but I've at least looked at uh, service dogs in Japan they do have signs where they allow service dogs be recognized that service dogs are not pets but they do make it they're they're not there's it's still a new concept here that there are service dogs and everything and if you um, want to have a service dog in Japan you actually need to uh, contact um, I may or may not have the link for it but you have to contact like the service dog company in Japan and then you have to apply and send say hey I'm gonna visit if you're visiting or wanting to stay you have to contact them to get a like an actual like identification kind of thing in the US you don't have to have identification to have a service dog I mean you want them to look you want them to wear the vest and all that kind of stuff and people don't bother you or whatever. That's why we have our own can of worms I'm not going to get into with that. But here, your dog has to be trained in Japan to be a service dog. Like, Japanese training to be certified to be a Japanese service or working in Japan as a service dog. You can't just come in there with a vest and say, oh, he's a service dog. I trained him myself. They have to go to a school. They have to show proof of training, which is, um, you know, maybe why they have difficulties here because it's also kind of expensive from what I've seen. I mean, dog training itself is like about $300 for like a six week course. And um, most of the people, when I asked about training in general, they would say, oh, you just train them at home yourself. I'm like, well, do you have any dog training schools? You know, I, I would like to work with Kiva to go a little bit more advanced not really um, obedience wise but more like doing tricks and that kind of stuff you know working on that but everybody like you do it at home you might work on it at the the park with your friends and trade uh, information which is fine but their whole thing was you do that at home training is at home and you know couldn't give me an idea for like dog training companies same thing with service dogs you have to it's hard to find a school and then once you find a school you do all of that and so 
you would have to, if you want to have a service dog in Japan, definitely get in contact with that um, company and then see what, what's needed. What do you need to bring over? What do you, um, how can you get their the little license and tag thing? Because once you have that, then the people in Japan will let your dog in it without a problem. From what I would assume that they would do. But if you just try to come in with your dog in his regular suit and, or vest and everything or even handle and obviously it looks like you need a service dog like if you're blind or you know hearing impaired or whatever and your dog is clearly a service dog they are they you know without that and proper identification it does make it harder for them to let you in now you might have some people that are a little more um you know considerate is the word I'm maybe looking for and they might say well you're blind or whatever and you or you you're disabled and need a service dog you may not have the the stuff but clearly this dog is doing something to help you out here maybe you're in a wheelchair and you have a service a dog that's helping you maybe you know even though you don't have the proper paperwork I can clearly see you need this instead of just saying I'm sorry, no, no, that made the amazing. Sorry, so I cannot let you inside with your animal because he doesn't have paperwork, so I assume he's a pet and leave it at that. I mean, it could be something that could happen in the US. I don't know, but I would assume that process would be kind of annoying because again, I I've only really I think I've only seen maybe four service dogs in Japan in the two years I've been here and mostly they've been at the train station going in and out of the train or walking and I mean um, they were like lab type, type dogs so they were bigger dogs and everything like that and so um, you know how they got in and everything is fine I didn't really get a chance to speak to those individuals about that um, but even that was just kind of like people were like, whoa, what if, like, you know, there's a dog and, you know, people do want to pet your dog and take pictures and all that kind of stuff and they don't, they're, Japan is still a working development when it comes to their, or service dogs in general. So, if you come, wanting, if you want to come to Japan to do that and you need that type of, um, you need a service dog and everything, then please do be patient with Japan. It will be kind of frustrating a little bit, but please do your best. And it, I mean, you need it. So people, you might have to just kind of knock some heads in there and educate many and many a times of how, how you need this, but there you go. So if again, you need it, I would recommend going ahead and looking into it now because it's going to be a little bit more difficult than just getting a regular dog. And the last thing here I will talk about is bringing the dog over from Japan. I know we're already almost at an hour. Ah! If you stuck with me this long, I love you. <laughs> uh, I might do more videos like this or whatever, but okay. Last one, bringing the dog over from Japan. Now I wanted to bring my dogs to Japan before I was going to Japan. I think after college or during college I was working on wanting to come to Japan and then um, right before I left, like maybe six months, I was already like, oh you can see my dogs going. Like I might have posted pictures like, yeah we're gonna go to Japan, just my dogs, woohoo. Okay, well and slowly researching the process, the cost and everything, I wanted to originally bring my dog with me together when I came to Japan. Well, because I left so soon, like I left, instead of leaving like in the normal time, I left at an unusual time and a very short notice. So I have found out I got a job in Japan, I applied, got a job in September and then I left, or I was planning on leaving like the end of September, October time, and then I left in November. Very short. So I couldn't bring my dog. I wanted to get my dog um, maybe six months after I was in Japan, that didn't work out. Then a year in Japan, that didn't work out. It took about a year and a half of being in Japan, or almost a year and a half of being in Japan before I was able to afford and otherwise have a place for my dog to be at. Okay? Okay. So that was rough for me. <laughs> I miss my dogs 
but um, I made it happen. I didn't give up, and even though a lot of I have actually talked to a few people I've mentioned before that I kept telling them, "Yeah, I'm gonna bring my dog to Japan. Yeah, I'm gonna do, it. I'm gonna do it," and they're like, "Oh, okay." And then I said, "I got my one dog in Japan." And they're like, "Oh my God, you actually got a dog in Japan?" And I'm like, "Yeah, of course." It's me we're talking about. Anywho, so process of bringing dog in Japan. First of all, you want to have a dog. First, have a dog. Second, your dog must be at least a minimum of three months. Three months old, okay? Now, after your dog is three months old, you need to start the process. The process takes less than a year. Again, this all depends on the size of the dog. We'll just start with, um, it deviates kind of later on. But we'll just start with generic dog. I'm going to use Kiba as an example and move on with Kiba and then also use my bigger dog, Kuvira, as an example as well. So with Kiba or a dog, you get a dog over three months. Three months. Good. Now, the first thing you want to do is get your dog microchipped. Microchipping, your dog should already be microchipped. But if you have a three-month-old puppy and it hasn't been microchipped, hasn't had all the shots and everything, then go ahead. I again would not recommend wanting to bring a puppy to Japan. I This would probably be your dog that you've had for a few years. You love them, you want to bring them. So, um, your dog over three months has a microchip. Once it has a microchip, then any rabies after that counts. This microchip um, has to be a, kind of an international youth microchip. Pretty much all the microchips used now are um, are like that. When I got Kiba first microchipped, and I got him first microchipped so we can do health testing for when I was uh, breeding Shibas, he had just a regular American series, like a nine digit number or something like that. And then my other dogs got international microchips. Well, when I wanted to go to Japan with Kiba, Kiba needed to get a second microchip because the first one uh, internationally cannot be read. You have to bring your own microchip reader and that is extra work and if they can't read it there's a problem so i have to re-microchip keep up okay so depending on how much microchipping is um i would honestly if your vet can do it really cheaply go ahead wait for one of those like promotion sales like vetco at petco they do them for like 15 dollars or something it's just a regular microchip guys no big deal if you're kind of you know wanting to spend as less as possible go for a cheaper option that would be your microchip and shots re related things are things you want to you can probably actually save money on one of the few things you can in this expensive process of like 1200 dollars or whatever so okay you get your microchip and then they have to have their rabies shot they get two rate they need two rabies shots the first one they get it can be at the same time as the microchip or after and then the second one, they need to have at least a minimum, no, a maximum, like, not a maximum. Yes, a minimum of 30 days after their first rabies shot, after the microchip. So they get the next rabies shot. And then after they get that, then they have to get titer tested. Now, the rabies titer test is the thing that is one of the things that really will tell is hard to get. Not all veterinary clinics do it because of the blood test. They have to go in. Uh, get your dog and get a blood get blood drawn from your dog and send it off to the um, mine goes to Kansas City and they check the the antibodies in there they have to have at least I think a minimum of point point five to pass so um, that is one of the things because the blood test you have to send it over and you know sign up for that kind of thing a lot of veterinary clinics do not do that so you have to, I had to call around and find out uh, what clinics do do that. And by the time I found one that did it and it was reasonable, priced and everything, I went ahead and went with that company or that clinic. And so to make things easier with the rabies and everything, because you could essentially have all of that done and then go to the clinic just for the, the titer test, but some clinics like to... They want to start the whole process with you so they can keep up to date and make sure everything's done properly. You can do that, but for me, I was trying to save what little money I have. So I just brought, did everything cheaply and then went to the expensive titer test, which wasn't so bad. 
and um, they did that. Now I tested three dogs at the time, Kiba, Honey, and Kuvira. Those are three dogs I intended to bring to Japan. Kiba and Honey both passed their titer test the first time, which was great and everything. Kuvira did not. She was a puppy. I think she was about, um, about, <laughs> I got her tested in September, October, so she was probably about six, seven months old. And they told me before that sometimes puppies don't pass the first time because they are puppies, they haven't had enough time to be rabies uh, vaccinated. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And considering the type of animal she is, you know, it it's, can be understandable. Uh, I won't go into that, but in general, so sometimes it happens they don't pass. If they don't pass, you have to take it again and pay the fee again, which I did again. Anywho, so again, it depends on how much that is. So after your dog has taken their titer test and you've gotten the results and they passed, very good. Now you have to wait 180 days, 180 day quarantine which is about six months. Six months quarantine from the date that uh, the titer has been tested and received or tested and approved and then you wait 180 days from that. That means that, oh no, quarantine. Quarantine is not as bad as you think it is. Quarantine is not lock them in a box and touch them with the glove and only see visitations. No, 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 that's not that. Quarantine means that your dog should not and should not, not saying cannot, but should not leave the country for that time if they're trying to go to this other country. Now, other countries have different quarantine times, different regulations. Japan doesn't require a 180 day if they're coming from the, um, the US. Australia, not so difficult. And some other places that do not have rabies, um, it's not so bad, but because the US does have rabies, that's the requirement. So don't bring your dog between that six month period. Be if you try to bring your dog before their quarantine is over, then um, A, Japan can reject your dog and send it back. They can destroy your dog, you know, they, they can. Or they can uh, keep your dog quarantined there. If they keep your dog quarantined for the remainder of the time, you pay each day. For them to take care of your dog, keep them in, a, in the kennel and for each day that they need left. If you try, if you're on quick orders and everything, maybe military or something, and you gotta like go, 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 then you know it's better just to find a friend, a really good friend or a family member or something to watch your dog until they can send them. You can send for them. That's what I did. I had my mom take care of my dog so she can send for him, or I can send for him later. So after the hundred days is over, that Titer test is good for, um, so it depends, two to three years, but generally two years. So two years from like the start of that titer test, that test is good for. Because maybe you wait for the first 180 days of six months and then your dog is free to go. And then you have about a year and a half where it's still good to, if, if that's not a good time or you're going to come back or make arrangement to bring your dog, you have time. Now, if you miss that time, that two year mark, then you have to retest your dog. You do not have to wait another 180 days if they pass the test. If they fail the test, then yes, you do. You have to retake the test. But if they pass the test again, then you can just take your dog and it goes for another two years. So that's what I'm looking at with my next dog, Honey. Her test is almost, her uh, first test is almost over. She did pass hers, and so I need to get her out here or pay another fee. So, okay, after you have gotten your dog and you're waiting for, or not gotten your dog, but you've passed the titer test and you're waiting for them to come to Japan, you want to find a kennel, a nice large kennel. The kennel needs to be airline approved. Always double check because um, sometimes the airlines change what brands of kennels they allow and don't allow. It should have ventilation on both sides, be hard plastic, and have a metal gate, and be able to um, screws or, uh, what are those things? Z-zips? Uh, you know what those little plastic things are. I can't think of the names of those. 
but they need to close, be hard plastic to protect the dog, and have a metal gate. Next, they need to have an absorbent material at the bottom so the dog potties or water spills in there, it absorbs. Next, do not use newspaper. Okay? Do not use newspaper. Kiba came with, like, I, my mom put something else in there and they took it out at um, the overnight stay and they put newspaper in there and then it messed with the bottom of the kennel and it's hard to clean out because it's ink and everything. It's annoying. But, um, anywho, so um, you need to have that, an absorbent material, and then food and water bowls for inside the kennel so they can have water and food and people can feed them. And uh, especially because they will be doing that overnight stay, you want to leave food and that kind of thing. Next, the kennel size must be bigger than your dog, obviously. They are very particular about it, especially for international. You want to at least have a couple inches above the top of their head. Kiva, come here. Kiva! Kiva, come here. Hey, Kiva. Oh, good boy. Okay, this is Kiva. Kiva's not that tall. Okay, Kiva's not that tall, but Kiva's got what we call perky ears. He doesn't have little flat doggy ears like this. No flat doggy ears. No, ah, you were sleeping. What is it? What is it? What? What is it? Okay, he's got perky doggy ears. As you see, they're kind of big. Not so big. I mean, for a sheep, but ah. Okay, you want a treat? Come here. Get out of here. <laughs> Hi, Kiba. But his ears stick up. And they don't want the top of the ears touching the top of the crate. So you can't have it like this. You need to have space like this above the head, above the ears. Now, obviously, there's space above the head. And if you have a dog that's got big old ears but it's got you know short legs and whatever that you still need a big crate and for Kiva I used an international series type crate so it's or not international <laughs> intermediate so it's not a large it's not an extra large it's kind of like somewhere in between or medium large in between kind of thing that you can find really cheap you can use a used one find it on Craigslist let it go whatever get it really cheap because you just need to get them there and maybe you can use it in Japan, I don't know. But, um, you gotta get a crate, get all the bowls and stuff, and get the crate ready and everything. After you have all that ready and you have your dog ready, then it's like the week or two, or not the week or two, so you, you're starting on that process. That is the work that you do in America. In Japan, you have your own work, job to do. Um, 40 days before your dog is set to arrive, you have a minimum of 40 days before your dog is set to arrive into the country. You need to notify uh, immigration, uh, uh, you know, customs and immigration. So you need to contact them and say, hey, I plan on bringing a pet from the U.S. to Japan. Here's the information about my animal. Can you approve it? Maybe. <laughs> and so you need to make sure you do that. You have to, they do have, you can only really uh, communicate with them online, email, that kind of thing. They're really pretty good at responding within 24 hours, so it's not bad communication. And you just got to uh, send in your paperwork, send in your, uh, I think I sent in my titer test, fill out the information, everything on the application, send it to them. They will approve it and send it back. After they approve it, then you have the paper. And if you ever need to change it, maybe your flight changes or your dog changes, maybe your dog changes or whatever, uh, like flight information, if you need to change it, you have to send in another, um, like a change form and they can change it. I might actually have to do that. So I'll let you know that process another day, another time. But um, with Kiva, everything was good, solid. So I just never had to change anything. But they send in the paperwork and um, that kind of thing. And once it gets closer to the date, so now you have the less than 40 days, you can't bring a dog unless you send in that um, that announcement kind of thing. Because if you do, the, if you don't do that, they will not accept your dog at all. They won't. They'll send it back or destroy it. It's a problem. So after they've been made aware that your animal is coming, 
then they're like, okay, good. Um, you know, send in the last bit of information. Uh, you also need to, this, I'm trying to think of the process out of my head. <laughs> like the week or so before you fly out, your, or your dog flies out, you already have your airline booked, not paid for just yet. You just book it with the, um, you know, book it with United. You can do it a couple days before, a week before, a couple months before. I did a couple of months, but um, because I wanted to send that information to, uh, you you probably should book your flight when you, before you send your, uh, your announcement thing or whatever to Japanese immigration to let them know so they can be able to track that. And then um, everything's all good. Last thing you have to do is the health certificate. You have to get an international health certificate from that same vet that did that should have done the um, titer testing because a lot of vets don't want to like it's like the recheck paperwork and sign off on things they just rather it all have been at one place. That's the vet's personal preference, not anybody else's. So that's why you can't really. You might have a hard time trying to go to different places to get different things done. It's better to get it all done in one place. That way they can also help you. Um, my vet knew some information about the process of sending animals to Japan or overseas because she also worked with military. But um, at the same time, I did a lot of the work myself. I had to do a lot of the research and everything. And that was a little bit... That's why I know how to actually do the process because looking online, checking people's videos and everything, I wasn't getting much information from that. And if you guys need extra detailed information, you know, put a comment down. I will walk you through it and everything because I'm about to do the process again. So there's that. But anywho, so after that, you get the health certificate and make sure all that paperwork's there. Then you take your paperwork to U.S. Uh, uh, agricultural immigration kind of thing or the agricultural service you take that there and they have to stamp and seal and approve everything like you don't just get the health certificate like you do in the US if you're flying domestically and just go you have to go down there and they have to seal and that mine was probably like hundred and twenty dollars extra just for them to look at the paperwork and seal and say hey everything's all good you can fly so make sure you have time to do that and that can only be done I think the health certificate is good for like seven days before your flight and then you also want to have that seal within a couple days of your flight. So this is like the last minute extra uh, fees. And so keep that in mind. Like if you're budgeting, it's not just paying for this, this and this. You got to go to another place and pay an extra fee and then before you get on the plane. Once you get on the plane, you just go or you send in the paperwork and they say, okay, uh, the plane will take all of the paperwork they need and everything and you know you send it off you also make sure you have a copy and if you are receiving my my sister dropped off the dog for me given the paperwork I had a copy of everything so that just in case anything got lost I still had a copy to show proof but they send like originals and stuff so um the dog flew he stayed at the the overnight thing. The guy was nice enough to take a picture because I was like, I'm worried about my dog. Send me a picture of him. I'm worried. And he was like, okay. So Kiba was okay. And then Kiba arrived like he flew on a Friday and arrived on a Sunday because he overnighted like my Friday, their Sunday, or my Friday, then my Sunday kind of thing. And so I went to the airport, which is KIX, Kansai International Airport, to go pick him up. And that process is what another thing people don't mention is you have to go through a, I think it's like seven, seven to ten different steps. You go to the airport, you gotta get a pass to be approved to go to like the back part of the airport. Like this is like a security thing. So you have to go through security to get to the, the customs area for animals and stuff. I drove with a friend and he, well, he drove me and thank goodness he drove. It was kind of a little rainy that day, number one. And number two, how many times we had to go, go back and forth between each building? You go to the one building, say, hello, I'm coming to pick up my dog. They say, okay, let's check your papers. 
check your paper. Now I need you to go to customs and go get your paper check there. And I need you to come back and get another stamp here after we check and do that. And then you can see your dog like in the cage. I can see my dog and hear him crying for me. So I was like, oh, I see my dog, but I can't take him. I can't take him out. And then after we get here, then you go right back to that same building, which was customs. We go on a different floor and um, they have the vet clinic, vet customs or whatever. And we will transport your dog to there. And then they will check your dog and say, oh, this is a dog. He's here. He's alive. He's not see you know dead so yay but you still can't have your dog you can say happy reunion but we're not going to take him to use the bathroom at the time i was kind of annoyed because kiva did not use the bathroom and he just spilled water in his crate in the newspaper and i cleaned that out and then they wouldn't let me take him out to the bathroom to actually go pee because he had a happy pee and i know my dog but whatever and then when they put him back in the crate to take him back to the building so I can go back, fill out some more paperwork in this building, and then go back to the building to fill out the last bit of paperwork and pay some fees before they release my dog, which now he has peed all over in the crate and now smells like pee, so I'm very pissed. But the last bit is that you have to, um, like with customs and everything, you gotta declare what's what, what everything is, your dog, you know, how much, how much do you value your dog? Like, how much is your dog worth? If something were to happen to him, how much is he worth? It's it's hard because you're like, my dog's worth everything. I mean, he's at least worth a thousand, like $1,500 would be bringing his little butt over here. So, I mean, yeah, that's an expensive little dog. But if you, you should put less than a hundred dollars or whatever, because then your fee, they take out like, whatever like two percent or any two percent like a, a percentage for how much you put on your dog or your item or whatever how much you declare that's the percentage they'll take out and so i if i said he was like worth a couple thousand dollars then they're going to take out a few hundred dollars as a fee and charge me for that and so i know it's really hard i haven't seen the negative consequences for this action yet but um right now it was just declare them as cheap as possible and reasonably enough so I could have a small fee and then um, go through because it was on a Sunday I was there maybe four hours yeah four hours doing the back and forth back and forth back and forth and so it was a Sunday and Sundays were part of their holiday days or they're out of working business hour days so I had to pay an, a fee for picking up my dog on a Sunday, which I thought maybe it was between hours of 8 to 5 or something like that, and they said no, weekends and after 5 o'clock and before 8 o'clock if you need to pick up stuff, there is a fee, like a holding fee and everything. So with all the fees I had to pay it was an extra about 50 bucks or like, like, Gosen Ropyakuin. 5,600 yen or something like that. So it was an extra fee I was not expecting to pay because I thought everything was fine and good. I picked up my dog in a reasonable amount of time and you know when I had originally asked in an email is there any fees it like maybe if I didn't pick up my dog that day like if I picked him up the next day was there a, uh, ho a pet hotel fee like holding him overnight kind of thing and they were not very clear on that. They said they don't know, da da da. You know, it's the same old Je like Japanese story because when they don't know, they don't want to look it up. So, not all Japanese people, but when they don't know, they don't want to find out for you. They're just like, I don't know. Take it like that. It's kind of like Oklahoma. Oklahoma does that too. They're like, I don't know. Oh well. And then they'll charge you and say, well, you know, that is what it is. And I'm like, well, why couldn't you tell me this so I could prepare instead of giving me something I couldn't prepare? Luckily, I was prepared myself to pay any extra little fees. I mean, it wasn't $100, which was great, but this was also having to pay a transportation to get up there, um, whatever. And no, no, no support of how do I get my dog home, like if I took the bus or the train or nothing, like, you know, no, no help. So please keep in mind that if you have a dog this size, we took an air, or we took a car. 
it's better just to take a car, at least to get home. Find a friend, rent a car, or call a service and see if you can at least get help getting home. Because I haven't tried the um, taking the big kennel onto the train yet. I think the bus would allow you to maybe, but the train, I'm not sure. I know they have a thing about taking like a, a washing machine on the on the train or refrigerator. They don't let you do stuff like that. So a big kennel, I'm not sure if it has wheels. Mm, you might throw a blanket over it. That's what I was going to try is getting a kennel, putting wheels on it, and then just throwing a blanket over it, minding my own business, you know? <laughs> like a big wagon and see how that works. If I will have to record that and let you guys know another day when I'm brave enough to do that. But, or I have time and wheels on my kennel. But yes, so that would be a thing you have to consider before you pick up your dog. Like, there's a lot. I didn't consider, I considered the getting and I was able to have a friend at the time to do that for me, which was when I got there and saw the actual situation, that was a damn good blessing and I was very happy for that. But. Not everybody will have that same opportunity, that same luck as I did for that particular time. When I pick up my next dog, I don't know if I'll have that. But at least I'm a little bit more prepared. Make sure you get a copy of everything. If you're gonna bring more than one dog, get copies of the fees and stuff so you know for the next time. You know, for the next time when's a good time to bring your dog over because they people don't tell you things until it's time to involve money and then they want to like jump in and say oh well this is this and this is why it's justified but we're not going to tell you beforehand to prepare because you know so keep that in mind you have to do that um getting your dog home and everything a lot of things to keep in mind than just say i want to bring my dog from america to japan and you know it's going to be great it's going to be wonderful i mean i love it i clearly would do it again and again again and again and then going back home going back home is actually not as difficult I was just looking at that and um, basically uh, it's the same kind of process but because uh, the US is a rabies country there's no um, there's not really a, a quarantine thing you just have to submit your paperwork to both U.S. and Japan, say, Japan, I want to take my dog out, U.S., I want to bring my dog in, let them look over your paperwork, make sure your dog has all its shots, and then go back that way. Probably pay about the same amount, though if you fly with A&A, wow, almost an hour and a half, I'm sorry. If you fly with A&A, then um, their fee is set at 400 about $400 per dog. And they get fly up to three dogs on a plane. But you have to be on there versus United, where United has a different fee, like for uh, under 50 pounds is about 600 plus the overnight. And then, um, what's it called? Then the next size up is like 800 plus overnight, everything. And it goes up from there. Uh, you, uh, ANA, you have to fly with them and then your dog flies with you, you be together and it's like 400 each dog and they'll just go to the uh, location. Now they don't fly to Oklahoma like that, I don't believe. They want to say that you have to check with your domestic uh, airline and see what the price is, but I mean, you know, if I was going home it wouldn't be as expensive so when I go home it won't be as expensive as flying to Japan without dogs but um, and that just goes on top of your ticket so if your tickets about a thousand dollars and then you want to bring four dogs you know that's a lot cheaper than each each of you are a thousand dollars plus so take that into consideration it's not again not as hard it's just if you have money saved, money and time to come to Japan and everything like that, then um, it's not that expensive. It's not that, if you think about it smartly and plan, it, it's not that bad of a process. There are some little hiccups you might have, maybe different days when your vet can do stuff, can't do stuff. Uh, maybe you, you personally wrote down the wrong information or you know your flight 
I think the date keeper was leaving they wanted to say that they that they canceled that flight and I was like in a panic like you canceled my dog's flight to come to like America like come to Japan you canceled that flight like what the heck so they had to or it was the one that was going from uh, Dallas to San Francisco and they canceled that five o'clock flight so he had to fly a couple hours later and they found one and he was on there and it was safe but I mean that was a panic I had like whoa my dog might not be coming and I was like oh kind of thing so yeah so make sure you like um you're prepared for that and if you need kind of help again I just know mostly for Osaka though this process is very similar going to like Tokyo or maybe any other place um again Tokyo and Osaka are like the two big airports mainland that I can think of um, Naha and Okinawa again probably similar stuff there is a service especially in Naha there is a service for um, uh, doing pet delivery or not delivery but like transportation transport so I think it was like Sarah's pet transport if you guys are interested in that I can try to help you find that but I mean the price is reasonable if you you know you're a family and you're trying to bring your dog out and you're in the military or something like that and you know she will do some of do the work and everything you just pay for that or you can do different pet services i unfortunately am doing this all myself and having to do the research and everything and pretty much fund this myself and working as an english teacher in japan as lovely as that is it's not like I i'm not balling okay when people are like, as I mentioned before, like, are you rich? You have a pet? And I'm like, look, I'm not balling. Like, this is a necessity I need to have. It's a little expensive necessity, but it's a necessity I need to have. So I'm not balling. I'm not, like, you know, throwing it up out here. But, um, what's it called? You know, I took me a couple, like, it essentially took me a year and a half to get a dog in Japan. Like, it took me a year to get me, uh, Set, like settled in Japan and then it took you know time to get find me an apartment and afford to uh, move into this current apartment here and then save up from that I went home for Christmas and go check on the dogs and get paperwork uh, you know make sure everything good there and then it took the time to save up money to get to the next step and that was actually bringing the dog sitting the notice in and getting that approved and then, um, you know, really since I left Japan in January, from January till uh, March, like the end of March when he finally came out here, I mean, that was a constant process, saving money. Um, you know, I've been like working on this really hard to get these do my dog out here in Japan. So, I mean, if that took, you know, from the paycheck that takes saving maybe about five hundred dollars a month a couple hundred dollars a month every little bit maybe you don't need to go on that trip to save up i mean it's about saving and everything so once you start saving buying food out here you know the insurance registering your dog i think registering your dog like in my city was like 35 dollars so that's an extra fee to do that and everything like that so you know it's a thing you have to know and there's like breakdowns and stuff and not everybody tells you this because uh, maybe they're just not detailed maybe you should just do the stuff or they'll just tell you don't bring a dog to Japan it is kind of some work you do need to have resources to do it if I didn't have my parents or friends or whatever not or whatever but like if I didn't have them to assist me in taking care of my dog getting them to the vet doing taking like taking care of them while I'm in Japan then this would have been impossible and I mean for some people that kind of is because I left before and I'm trying to bring my dog and I need somebody to take care of them and I still do and if you are wanting to leave together that might delay your um, your trip to come to Japan now if you want to start the process now if you for sure think you are going to Apply, if you're applying for jobs now and you for sure see yourself coming to Japan within a year then like you have money set aside for you to come to Japan for your own ticket and then you for sure see yourself coming then go ahead and start the process with your dog or cat dog or cat 
You can probably bring some other animals. You have to check the um, the website, but bring in a dog and a cat is probably the easiest one. Go ahead and start that process now. I mean, microchipping and having your rabies, that should already be done anyway. So that's kind of already done. So you're mostly just getting that tighter chest and doing the six month quarantine before you get to the, you know, putting the notice out and getting your dog here. You know, you might already have a big kennel for your dog. Half of that's already done. Now it's the next bigger step. So you can already start doing that now. You can start planning, um, getting that ready. And then um, again, like I said, it lasts for two years, about two years or so. So, you know, if you see yourself going in two years, then you already have that. So now that after the six months, your dog can leave at any time after that six month without having to worry about quarantine. It's good. So if you're like, all right, your dog is good and finished and now it's just waiting on you. You guys can now leave together. This, um, you can get your job and they say, hey, yeah, we want you out here. Then um, you can come out with your dog and bam, you're out here. But also double check with the schools because if you are applying to teach English, again, we can put that in another video about how to apply to teach in Japan. But one of the things that some school that will bring you out, you would have to stay in their housing and their housing 9.5 times out of 10 will not accept pets. If they have housing, they will not take pets. And if you want, you're like, okay, that's fine. I'll find my own place. They're, no, you don't find your own place. You stay with their place and their company and you stay there. And if you don't plan on wanting to stay at that job for a long time, then you're going to be out of an apartment very quickly. And Again, the whole don't sneak a pet because as, as expensive as it is to bring a pet to Japan or to buy a pet in Japan or the expense it is for you to like try to sneak your animal and then they kick you out of your apartment or just, you know, there's a problem because you have a pet. That's too much of an expense to like just whatever, you know, it's it's too much of an expense and a risk for your animal, which I don't think you would want that. So, you know. Again, getting a job in Japan, another video, but that was just general pet stuff. I can't believe this took like an hour and a half. Oh my god. <laughs> and I just pretty much rambled about everything and played with my dog. But I hope I got all the questions. I think I did. I went through the list, but now the iPad is dead again. So I'll probably make another video when I get the next dog or anything like that and maybe do how is it like having two pets in Japan. If there was any questions you guys have, I don't mind answering them. Probably shorter, hopefully. <laughs> um, just put them in a comment or just message me. If you are wanting to come out to Japan with a pet, with a pet or send for a pet, if you're already in Japan and want to bring your, like have your dog be sent out to you, go ahead, hit me up. Um, I will help you the best I can because I've done it. I actually don't. I know one person from Australia that brought his cat over, but I actually don't know anybody else that I've personally met in my adventures of being in Japan, except for maybe in Okinawa, but like in Japan, mainland Japan, I don't know anybody else that has brought their dog or cat over from the US to Japan. Never met anybody, and when I tell people I have an American dog, they're just like, wow, Japanese people are like, wow, there's Shiva's in America? What? <laughs> what? There's Shiva's in America? Yes, there are. And your dog's from, like, your dog's from America and there's Shiva's in America. Those two things. But, um, yeah, I actually don't really know anybody because it is kind of like, it can be a hassle and people don't want to do that. It might be easier just to buy a pet here and go through whatever. They do have, like, um, at the pet store. I think they have like you pay monthly fees. Like if the dog is like two thousand dollars, you could pay like eighty dollars a month to help pay for the dog. You know, I don't know. You have to. That one, I'm not a hundred percent for sure because I haven't bought a dog here, and nobody has offered the hey, would you like to buy a dog? Because you can do it by monthly installments. It's just kind of reading the characters and figuring out that way. So. There's that, but yes. Anything else, Kiba? Kiba!
Come here. Come here, Kiva. Is there anything else we need to add? Huh? No. Also, keep your dog clean. Where's Kiva? Oh, he's so lazy, old man. Oh, my Kiva. Say hi, Kiva. Hi to all the people. Again, his thing is Kiva Osaka Adventure on Instagram. So you can follow his adventures going to shrines and other weird stuff. Here you go. Here's a treat. Here's your treat. So, okay. So, I'm going to cut this video and see you guys. Um, again, like, comment. I don't know where I'm posting this at, but subscribe as well. If you want any more things, just ask questions. I'll do a video, maybe a shorter one, or... Give me some ideas to talk about. I do try videos, like I think the last video I did was the um, a live stream on my Facebook about the Pikachu McFlurry and how that went down. So, um, yes, anything, just hit me up. All right, bye bye.